So if it is so safe, why is it so feared? Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julia and I am a Dallas-based flight attendant. I thought for today's video it would be a really fun topic and it's actually one of my most frequently asked questions both on Instagram, here on YouTube, and just from friends and family in real life and that has to do with conquering your fear of flying. So I asked you all on Instagram that if you do have a fear of flying to let me know specifically what that fear is and the most common responses were turbulence and flying through bad weather. So I think first it's important to understand that of course there is a risk to flying, but even with that very small risk, it is still statistically the safest mode of transportation. So if it is so safe, why is it so feared? I personally think it's because TV shows, movies, the news all sensationalize the possible danger of flying. <laughs> And they do this because it is actually so rare for a plane to actually go down. So of course, when something does go wrong, it's going to be all over the news and it's going to be everywhere. When you think about it, car accidents happen way more often than airplane accidents, but you don't really think of it as much and it doesn't seem as dangerous to you because driving is something most people do every single day. I mean, I don't even fly every single day and I'm a flight attendant. Let's talk about turbulence. Although turbulence may be uncomfortable, it is honestly a very normal part of flying. Turbulence is essentially a change in airflow that can be caused by turbulent air or jet streams from other airplanes. You can also have thermal turbulence, which is created by hot air rising, or you can have mechanical turbulence, which is created by tall buildings or mountains. So for example, every single time I fly into Colorado, it is so turbulent and that's because of the Rocky Mountains. And I think it's important for people to know also that the pilots are in constant communication with air traffic control and if they know ahead of time that we are going to be going through turbulent air they will communicate that with us as the flight attendants which we can obviously communicate with all of the passengers on board and at this point we will of course illuminate the fasten seatbelt sign as well as make an announcement to advise all passengers to remain seated with their seatbelts fastened and at this point the pilots are going to do everything in their power to get us to smoother air this is why it is so important to to listen to your flight attendants. When we all say to please stay in your seats with your seatbelts fastened, it's to protect everyone and to keep everyone safe. No one's happy when a flight has to either delay or cancel due to weather, but obviously those decisions are made to keep everybody's safety in mind. Air traffic control and the airlines will not allow a plane to take off or land in an area that they deem is unsafe. So just know that if bad weather is something that makes you nervous about flying, there really are precautions that that are being taken and have everyone's best interest in mind. There's also many times where we'll already be up in the air flying and we'll get a reroute and this is to avoid storms or to avoid heavy turbulence. So even though this can extend the length of the flight, it's all done to get everybody safely to their destination. Over the past few years, I really have learned a few different things from being a flight attendant about how to ease your nerves while flying and to really enjoy your traveling experience. Tip number one is when you are booking your flight, make sure that you book your ticket with a seat that you're gonna be the most comfortable in. Traveling is expensive and this isn't the most feasible thing to do, but I highly suggest that if you can to pay the extra cost, if there even is one, to pick your seat. For example, if you are someone who is antsy and likes to move around a lot, then maybe you should pick an aisle seat. That way you can get up and move about the cabin, of course, only when it's safe to do so. And this way too, if you have to use the restroom, you don't have to disturb the person next to you. If you are someone who wants to just totally zone out on your flight, then I highly suggest picking a window seat because you can lean your head up against the wall, you can put on some headphones and a face mask, and you can just easily sleep for the whole flight. For some people, it can also really help to sit at the window seat because this way you can actually look out the window and see what's going on, and watching the clouds can actually be a pretty good distraction. I have personally noticed that turbulence is always way more noticeable in the back of the airplane than it is in the front of the airplane. Seats that are closer to the front of the airplane or over the wings typically do have 
the smoothest ride and this also prevents motion sickness which leads me into tip number two tip number two is to do everything in your power to stay as healthy as you can before traveling a lot of people were telling me that they are really nervous about getting sick on a flight which is completely valid people get sick while traveling all the time i think one thing that has changed a lot especially due to the virus is people are cleaning their own seats and tray tables and their whole area on the plane a lot more often than they were before and i honestly think that people will continue to wear masks while they travel for a long time i don't really see that going away anytime soon now in terms of getting ill from the actual flight and motion sickness or turbulence there are a few things that you can do i highly suggest dramamine tablets they are great for motion sickness whether you are traveling by car by plane or by cruise ship ginger ale and sprite also really help to settle an upset stomach while you're flying there are times where even i get motion sickness i'll drink a little bit of ginger ale and it really does help a lot also make sure that a few days before you travel you don't eat any abnormal or super spicy or greasy foods that you know are going to upset your stomach i think having an upset stomach and having to go on a plane ride is probably one of the worst combinations that you could have especially if you are someone who is prone to motion sickness definitely don't eat anything that is outside of your normal diet before you're traveling and i know that it's also really difficult especially on long flights to avoid looking at your phone or any screens or tablets or reading materials but doing those things can also prompt motion sickness while you're flying tip number three is to get to the airport way earlier than you would even think that you need to the common rule is two hours for domestic and three hours for international however i suggest getting to the airport even earlier than that this is because the airport could be packed especially if it's your first time flying out of this airport you want to make sure that you give yourself enough time to figure out where your gate is where you need to check your bag where your terminal is where your plane is and even i get lost in so many airports before because simply i'm not used to them you will feel so much more relaxed and less panicked if you have plenty of time to get where you need to go i hate having that rushed feeling when you know that you are running late and you don't have a lot of time to get somewhere that you need to be and that's especially true when you're traveling because airplanes and buses and trains and cruise ships they will all leave without you so why put yourself under that stress of having a short amount of time to get where you need to go tip number four is to have plenty of distractions especially if you are a nervous flyer it is great to have things that will occupy your mind these can be anything from books magazines TV shows, movies, crossword puzzles. I've seen people knitting, I've seen people playing cards, but it's really important to have these things with you before you leave for the airport because you cannot always rely on the airline for having entertainment on the flight. There's a lot of planes that don't have TV screens or the Wi-Fi might be down and you have to have something that will entertain yourself. I suggest that you always download shows from Netflix or whatever streaming service that you have onto your phone onto your computer, onto your tablet, whatever it is that you used to watch. Whenever I travel, I always have so many different distractions because I want to make sure that I always have something to do on the flight because I personally get really bored while flying as a passenger. My fifth and final tip is to talk to your flight attendants. I can't promise you that on every single airline, on every single flight, that you're always going to have the nicest and most kindest flight attendant, but what I will say is 99.9% .9 of the time, you are going to have a wonderful and amazing flight crew who really want to help you have the best and most enjoyable flight experience that you can. We really do all love our jobs and we want our passengers to have an amazing experience flying. I would definitely say to talk to your flight attendants, let them know what's going on and see if there's anything that they can do to help you to have a better flying experience. First, it's important to understand flight attendants when but obviously those does it wow okay tip number 
So let me know in the comments below any other tips that you guys have for nervous flyers. And if you are a nervous flyer, if you have a question, feel free to ask and I will do my best to answer. Thank you everyone so much for watching and for supporting my channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more content, please subscribe so you never miss any of my travel tips and adventures. Thank you again, everyone, so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.